This is Twit. Another worrisome vulnerability in a Java framework has surfaced. The cybersecurity firm Praetorian said that the flaw impacts the spring core on the Java development kit versions nine and later. It's a, if, and this is odd too, it's a bypass for another much, and I mean much older vulnerability from way back in 2010. Uh, that one was tracked as 2010 16 22. And yes, only four digits. Those quaint days when we only needed four digits to there number are only our 10,000 <laughs> security flaws. <laughs> yeah, what happened to that? Uh, if exploited, this bypass enables an unauthenticated attacker to execute arbitrary code on the target system, making it, of course, a remote code execution, RCE. And unfortunately, uh, a Chinese security researcher briefly posted a working proof of concept for this exploit to GitHub before deleting the account. But as we know, it doesn't take long. Nothing remains hidden on the internet. So indeed, the proof of concept code was quickly shared in other repositories and tested by security researchers who confirmed it was a legitimate exploit for this new, potentially severe, and previously unknown Java vulnerability. So it had been patched in 2010, but there was yes. another way to get to it or something. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. So probably not fixed the way we would have wished, right. which would which is to say it would stay fixed. <laughs> this was a bypass around the way it was fixed. So Spring is a software framework for building Java applications, including web apps, on top of the Java EE, the Enterprise Edition platform. Uh, researchers have who've looked at it have said that in certain configurations, exploitation of this issue is straightforward, as it only requires an attacker to send a crafted HTTP, you know, a standard web query to a vulnerable system. However, exploitation of different configurations will require the attacker to do a little additional research to find payloads that will be effective. So in that sense, it does feel like the log4j, which, as we know, turned out not to be like the end of the world because it wasn't just drop-dead simple for script kitty weenies to, you know, massively ex uh, you know, uh, exploit. It really required more expertise. The Spring Frameworks maintainers, Spring.io, which is a subsidiary of VMware, uh, last Friday released emergency patch patches to fix this so-called, and it actually has been called Spring for Shell. Uh, you know, it's a zero-day RCE. Uh, well, that's what they're calling it. And I was trying to decide whether this would really be a zero-day if it wasn't being actively exploited in the wild against victims. And, you know, we know that Microsoft has a different, has their own definition for zero day. Normally, we reserve the term, and we're trying not to overuse it by making it overly broad, to, to be like, whoops, we learned about this because we saw it being used. That's clearly a zero day. So this is kind of a gray area because it's been, the exploit has been publicly disclosed. And I'm I imagine that in the next week or two, I'll be saying, ah, yeah, it went, it went from public disclosure to weaponized. Uh, but anyway, I think that since a public proof of concept exploit exists before a patch is ready, and there's no, actually a patch just happened, uh, but certainly the proof of concept had existed for some time, it probably qualifies as a zero day. Uh, there was... Also some confusion because two other related vulnerabilities in that same spring framework were also disclosed last week. There was a DOS vulnerability, you know, meaning you can crash the thing, and the spring cloud expression resource access vulnerability, and I didn't dig into those because they've, they've been patched and it's like, okay, um, and they're unrelated to this one. So... There's also been some questioning about just how bad this RCE really is. You know, the concern is that it is 
it it's being in use by enterprises for all kinds of their own custom server things, which means that it's you know who knows what's wrong with any particular enterprise's implementation. Um, after an independent analysis, Flashpoint said they said quote current information suggests in order to exploit the vulnerability attackers will have to locate and identify web app instances that actually use the and here it is the deserialization utils something already known by developers to be dangerous okay but that doesn't mean developers aren't using them because they're there right it's an api oh look this does what i want Let's, you know, so again, it's not like developers are nearly as security focused as we are and the group listening to this podcast is. Um, and, you know, we've talked a lot about the dangers of deserialization. Java is an object oriented language, which means that an object is a complex, well, or at least can be, typically is a complex data structure. So how do you store such a thing? The way you store it is you serialize the object into a byte stream, you know, a blob, which you then store. And in order to later reconstitute the object into a form that Java can use it, you need to deserialize the blob. And a deserializer is inherently an interpreter of the byte stream. And as we know, naive interpreters are written to assume that they will only ever receive a valid deserialization stream to deserialize. In fact, in an interesting twist, we're going to see that this this um, this wise cam authentication flaw is just it's sort of like that. It, it they the guys that designed the handshake just assumed you'd be a valid handshaker. Uh, but no. Anyway, uh, the security firm Rapid7 said that despite the public availability of proof of concept exploits, it's currently unclear which real world applications use the vulnerable functionality, which is really just to say, we don't know yet. You know, this is so, this just happened. So, you know, we need exploits in order to, you know we need we need actually actually get to have some problems before we know they the, and they and they said configuration and jre version may also be significant factors in exploitability and the likelihood of widespread exploitation however cert cc's oft quoted vulnerability analysis uh, analyst will dorman he tweeted he said the spring for shell exploit in the wild appears to work against the stock handling form submission sample code from spring.io. If the sample code, he says, is vulnerable, he said, then I suspect there are indeed real-world apps out there that are also vulnerable to remote code execution. And I think his logic is exactly right. You know, the developers, again, they're just going to take the sample code, which is obviously using the deserialized utils, and, you you know, like tweak it, change the name <laughs> to their company and, and whatever. So the flaw was assigned to CVE with a CVSS of 9.8. So that's meant to grab everyone's attention. And yesterday, so Monday, VMware published security updates to remove the flaw from their Spring I.O. subsidiaries code. But as we all know, also know, you know, publishing the update is different from having it deployed on a server that's out in the field. And this is all just very fresh. So, as I said, I expect in a couple of weeks, much as we'll be talking about the, the about the exploitation of the browser in the browser flaw that was theoretical two weeks ago, not anymore. So I think the same thing will probably be happening here. <clears throat> um, um, between the initial discovery of the vulnerability and yesterday's patch publication, uh, exploitation of the vulnerability where possible appears to have taken off at least as much 
to for for the CVE to get a 9.8. So it's considered to be of critical importance to anyone using this spring framework. If you if you're responsible for it or you know that your 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 organization uses it, definitely go get VMware's update and fix this. Um, it impacts the uh, spring it, being a framework uh, is of the MVC style, the model view controller approach, and also spring web flux apps running on JDK nine and later are vulnerable. So definitely worth doing. 